We will start now. We will start. Good morning to whoever, wherever you are. Namaskar. I am Thomas Abraham, Chairman of the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin, Gopi International. We are very pleased to note that we have participation and attendees from all continents, from the Americas, Europe, Africa, Far East, and Oceania countries. Although pandemic kept us homebound for about one year, this has also provided an opportunity for us to reach out our diaspora worldwide through Zoom. For those who are not aware of Gopio, Gopio International is a pan-Indian community organization for NRIs and TIOs with over 100 chapters spread in 35 countries. It was formed in 1989 when there was widespread human rights violation of our people around the world. So we called up a convention in New York and uh, that resulted in, a, in the global organization of people of the earth. One of the main mission of Gopio was that because Indian And we wanted to see that that is somewhat corrected. And um, I'm, I'm very happy to tell you that in the last 30 years, we have somewhat achieved that goal. Last year, we have seen many Indian origin person coming as the head of the countries in Suriname, in Guyana, in Sinhalese, and in many countries such as Canada, UK, we have many people in cabinet level position, secretary level position, who are running the country. For Indian Americans in the USA and also Indian diaspora worldwide, the election of Senator Kamala Harris as the vice president of the United States is a great news, great achievement. And not only her, four other House of Representatives got re-elected. In addition to that, we have a large number of Indian community, Indian Americans have got elected to the various state houses. It's a great achievement for our diaspora community in last one year. We hope that we could motivate our younger, young, younger diaspora members to participate in public affairs. And today's event is one such opportunity. Other than having Gopio chapters, Gopio International is also organized vertically with various departments. Gopio Inter we have Gopio International Chamber of Commerce. We have Gopio Councils on Women. In fact, a few hours earlier, Gopio France was the host of Women's Day celebration. We have also other councils in, on academic, cultural, science and technology, council on seniors, youth and young professionals. Although Gopio Youth Network has been organized on chapter levels, we are yet to develop an international level networking. Today, meeting is now evolving as a global network of Gupio. I'm glad that we in the network, we, with your help, we will build up this network so that youth can communicate with each other. And also we can make them participate in Gupio affairs. We will connect all the chapter youth uh, councils with this international youth that itself will become a major, major force within our Gopio setup. As you know, India has the largest diaspora in the world and is still growing. Currently, the Indian diaspora has a strength of over 32 million. Government of India has taken several initiatives to reach out to the diaspora. Since the year 2003, Government of India has been organizing Pravasi Bharatiya Diva. And this is uh, from year 2015, it is being done every two years. Gopio has also conducted 
government of india was also conducted mini pravasi bharatiya divas in various parts of the world and india has a great interest to reach out and cultivate our diaspora youth it has several programs for the diaspora youth and is exploring more avenues to outreach last month uh, a former indian ambassador to uh, anil mudgal who served which has two names from the youth and young professionals who could speak on the topic india's outreach to the diaspora a youth perspective at a webinar to be organized by andarashtriya sahyog parishad arsp in delhi in april 2021 instead of uh, suggesting names of two people whom i know i thought it would be good to gather interested youth to speak on the topic since many new ideas could come out of this session so here we are organizing this session and we thank the participants who, who have <clears throat> joined from from the united states france germany there is no winners i just want to say there are no winners in this all of you are winners by your participation your ideas and recommendations will reach government of india through arsp from gopio international we have several officials present here lal motwani our international coordinator our another international coordinator at large dr asha saman our media council nami core would be joined soon professor nirja arun gupta he is also our council chair of um, academic council she is also just joined us new vice chancellor of sanji university and i want officially take this opportunity to congratulate her she just joined last week Uh, near bopal that is sanji so at this point it is my great pleasure to introduce our special guest none other than ambassador anup murgal a brief introduction ambassador murgal is a career diplomat retired as india's ambassador to mauritius he also served at the ministry of external affairs in india europe americas and africa currently he serves as the as the chair of diaspora research and Resource Center at the Andhra Pradesh Sahyog Parishad, ARSP in New Delhi. Ambassador Murthil, to to you, I present you. I present you to uh, present Ambassador Murthil. Thank you. I thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, may I may I request uh, other participants to please uh, mute <laughs> their connection. Otherwise, there will be a lot of disturbance in listening to me. uh thomas you have already introduced me uh, i would not go further uh i would make a very brief statement to further expand on what uh thomas has already mentioned i represent in this meeting the diaspora research and resource center which has been set up at the antarashtriya sahyog parishad minister yeah uh, it has been one is now it has been one in diaspora for 40 years uh, much in fact the department was in the affairs the initiatives like pravasi bharatiya divas or no india or many other uh, programs in fact the arsp made an important contribution developing those schemes and yeah when the external affairs decided to set up the diaspora research and resource center so primarily taking the outreach with the diaspora to a qualitatively different level in fact we were engaging with diaspora through either events or it was transactional the idea of the drrc is to 
issues more depth and, and greater seriousness therefore in fact rc has priority pillars is the outreach general out the other is how to engage and third is to help in case they are meaningful research for to help them in publication of that research or other and then maintaining an expert of diaspora organizations in india and world over in last four years organized a large and those events then research and recommendations by diaspora the idea that the must be driven by diaspora and those ideas remember when we is on impact of covid on india and diaspora we do up those recommendations if them have in act accepted by the government recommendations as youth engagement with youth diaspora is one of the big of drrc in fact a, developing and working on the existing channels for integrating youth with this discourse thomas i have worked with uh during my career for over 3 decades for the journey of from a very different level to the current level where over 30 million diaspora over 100 countries diaspora today is amongst the most successful diasporas anywhere in the world they they picked up the top of that politics beat economics industry technology higher education or cultural uh they they have done very well an important as of indian diaspora they also enjoy out of goodwill by countries and right and they have also maintained with their their roots in now you see india of course diaspora has done today as an important soft power it's in fact and that each and every member is india's ambassador abroad it is our statement now by looking at for example this engagement with the youth a regular phenomena world is going through transition will be driven thomas you remembering in delhi when you mentioned be driven by and technology is one area where indian diaspora has done immense well and therefore transition to the the next uh development that for a very very crucial role to play now when i say the diaspora indian diaspora enjoys tremendous local goodwill when people like you there must be a reason right based on my three and a half decades 
why uh, I like uh, Indian dance. But I would want to want from the who are the next generation and forward this flag of success into future. I want to from the youth if they perceive uh, uh, why, what is the value which carry with them to that form? Their cultural heritage, their creative, their interest in how to educate it, their great affection for say, we say democracy, freedom, uh, accommodation, pluralism. What are those which they feel are valued in them by and which ends in terms of improvement? How does for example, whenever you go, people say you can India, but you can't take an Indian. So wherever you go, twenty years from now, you would always with your in with your Indian values. That Indianness will always be with you. Is, to see this Indianness when your personality, how would people want this Indianness to reflect in you? I would want to hear from the youth what are those things they are happy about and what are those Things need to be improved. So, value to them and their presence on the global platform. This, in fact, as I said, I have contact with diaspora youth, including the No India platform host at DRRC. We are organizing and on 10. participation from at least 15 countries countries from east west we will one for the eastern segment western segment just zones and we what is their vision of this relationship Kind of relationship they want, so that this relationship value there and does not come in the way. So we want a very frank discussion with the youth. From that discussion, we will go back to our authorities and tell them. That you see, when diaspora the future week or a month or a year, not even decades. We are talking. Maybe most of those who are present here are not really probably fully aware that the story of Indian diaspora is very old. It is not. The story started in the. This story continued during the medieval time and this story has continued and I'm sure it will continue centuries to come. So in a, India is a global uh, citizen in its own personality, in its own culture, in its own value system. So that is what we want to from you how to negotiate this transition 
into future, which in my view will be slightly more complicated than years that have gone by. I will stop here and I would want to, my, my personal interest, primary interest is to listen to these young and see and well and how far we have the job well. So thank you for listening to me available whatever doubts and questions we'll answer those. Thank you. Thank you. The perspective of what we are looking for the future. I remember uh, having attending the uh, ARSP meeting in April, looking into what we could do to happen. And we have active meeting I also came to ARSP about a year and a half back uh, when I, I mean, rather two years back, when you hosted me to talk about the issue, about the perspective of Indian Americans. Uh, and also I thank ARSP, you gave me one of the uh, the top award of ARSP, uh, Bharat Vanshi Gaurav Award in 2008 uh, by Vice President Varun Singh Shekharji. Thank you. Now, uh, before I introduce our uh, uh, chair of the and moderator session, I want to recognize the presence of Mr. Ram Badbi, he's our vice president, um, uh, president of um, uh, Gopio Manhattan Shivendra Software, uh, Ashok Madan, our uh, executive committee member. I also want to recognize two people, the vice president of Gopio Central JRC, Vijay Gurk, and uh, president of um, uh, Gopio New York, Shivendra Sofet. And then Chitranjan Belwarrier, he's a great volunteer for Gopio New York, Gopio um, uh, Manhattan, Gopio Connecticut, uh, uh, all. And also want to recognize Mr. Andy Bhatia, our uh, former uh, president of Gopio, uh, FIA New York, uh, community leader, uh, Hari Panasar and Govind Munjal, former president of AIA. So at this time, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Bina Ramachandran. She's the chair and moderator of this session. Uh, Dr. Ramachandran is a professor of, at the University of Connecticut teaching math and statistics. Also the CEO and founder of her own consulting company. Bina has orchestrated and MC Gopio India Independence Day celebration and many youth even. Um, she is a member of Gopio Connecticut. Meena? Thank you, Tom. And um, thank you, Anup Anupji, for um, your perspective on diaspora. And uh, thank you for being here. Welcome to all our participants and all our esteemed guests. Thank you for making the time to come today. So today we are going to experience an informative session from participants from different countries on India's outreach to the diaspora, the youth perspective. As Thomas mentioned after the session, we will pick two youths from today's session and they will sp speak at the webinar organized by ARSP on April 10th, uh, 2021. So I time to introduce the panel for today. So we are all Raham. He is the chairman of Gopi and he's taken many initiatives, including this. We have Anita Bhatt, who is the past Gopio Connecticut president, and she has been responsible for, for many, and uh, she has done um, a lot, lot of work on this event too. So thank you, Anita. We also have Naveen Patak, and he has been a long-standing supporter of Gopio and his initiatives. He's a serial entrepreneur and the chief operating officer of Entry India LLC. With a focus on US India Ambassador Corridor, he has launched many business initiatives in India. He has trained over 1,500 educators, including deans, VCs, professors, policymakers, etc 
in the use of OERs, open educational resources for creating academic and skill development courses. Naveen, thank you so much for all your contributions and for helping out with Gopia. And we have Nami Kaur, who is the chair of Gopio International, as well as the editor of Gopio Newsletter. She has been with Gopio since the inception, since 1989. She has served Gopio in several roles, including general secretary for Gopio International from 2012 to 2016 and as chair of the Gopio 2020 election committee. She's a life member of Gopio. So that is our panel of judges for today. Thank you so much, all of you for being here and being a part of this wonderful presentation. So without any further ado, let's go ahead. Uh, let's introduce our eager group. I worked very hard. Uh, we are really looking forward to your presentation. So just a few housekeeping. We will each participant speak. Ms. Carr will be uh, for the session and she will let you, um, when you have a minute left. We're going to start with our first supportian. Ananya, a junior in high school, inspired education in psychology. She dance and singing and has completed seven years in Bharatnatyam. She is also a committed community volunteer and a tutor at STEM mentor for Boys and Girls Club. In addition, she is the founder of the blog Cultural Kaleidoscope, which delves into Asian culture from a young American Indian's perspective. Ananya, you have the stage. Thank you. My name is 19 years old. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here today. I'm honored to speak in front of all of you. Growing up as an Indian American, I have always been eager to know more and more about my culture. And one way I have kept in touch with it is through Indian media. This age of advancing technology, I believe Indian media is an effective way for India's youth diaspora country. Through music and movies, we are able to strengthen our understanding of Indian customs and language as well as the current issues in India. Be able to get in touch with document documenting problems or interesting aspects in, of India in order to learn more through their research. Regarding learning about Indian customs, festivals are one of these customs that are central to Indian culture and can help to educate the diaspora and make us more in touch. Since in today's age especially, virtual means of education have become the norm. I believe that things like virtual festival experiences would encourage the Indian youth diaspora to learn about and participate in Indian tradition, and as a result, feel more in touch with our home country. I would like to conclude by saying that it is inspiring to know that in our current US presidential administration, individuals from the Indian diaspora holding high executive positions, including Vice President Kamala Harris. This portrays to young Indians throughout the country that we are intelligent and persevering values and makes us vital to the growth of society worldwide. Thank you once again for the opportunity to participate on this platform. Ananya, thank you. It's uh, wonderful it is to see our youth uh, speaking, um, especially on the subject. Thank you again for your time. Thank you so much. Our next uh, presenter is Anjo. Anju is a junior who is in academic fields, music, swimming, and technology. From a young age, he has students to improve their academics. He gives speeches and enjoys playing violin and piano. Looking forward to your speech today. Thank you for the introduction. Today, Mr. Anup Mudgo. Dr. Thomas Abraham, distinguished guests, aunties, uncles, and my friends. First, let me start with a little history of the Pravasi Bharatiya Divas. It is a day to commemorate the Mahatma Gandhi from South Africa, January 9, 1915. The day also celebrates the contributions of the overseas Indian community 
The Pravasi Bharatiya Divas is a platform to connect the diaspora with the motherland and promote the concept of a global Indian family. Since then, every two years as a three-day convention where a forum is held for discussing issues concerning the Indian diaspora, has a diaspora youth program called the No India Program for the youth to visit India and experience its culture. Participants can then promote different facets of Indian heritage, art, and various aspects of contemporary India in their home country. Overall, this program provides a unique forum for students and young professionals of Indian origin to share their views and bond closely with India. At the end of the program, the participants become youth representatives reflecting a positive image of India. It can be enhanced to have ongoing virtual visits for past attendees to keep closer ties to India. So how can youth participate and help in making an impact in India? Here are some ideas. The first is cultural exchange program for the classroom, establishing an outreach a diaspora country creates virtual par partnerships at the school level, enabling young individuals on both sides to experience the education and develop an understanding of the culture systems. This bond will be established at the grassroots level and continue to build as these children grow up into young adults. Second, establishing youth ambassadors as a formal organization in respective countries where the diaspora reside, who help and create a connection with mother India. country could have additional targets for population that can further support in-country diaspora activities. This can have a two-year term. Kravasi Bharatiya Divas Biennial Celebration. This council will meet on regular on special occasions with to discuss current issues and propose solutions. Once a year, they can be brought together for an international conference of youth ambassadors. This can be similar to a model Congress event where real policy issues can be done, discussed and resolutions are passed as a recommendation to the concerned stakeholders, such as the Indian Council for International Cooperation. Third, annual socio-economic unique challenges and competitions specific to India for the diaspora youth to come up with issues like clean drinking water, alternative energy sources, reducing the carbon footprint, improving technology, etc. would further encourage the diaspora youth to engage. Finally, exploring and increasing the number of programs that can help the diaspora youth engage with study abroad programs at Indian universities in India and volunteer opportunities to serve in charitable organizations. All three of these initiatives would also provide them with a valuable experience useful for their future career. Ultimately, this is for youth and learning leadership, influencing foreign policy, and become members of a global Indian community for a borderless India. As these youth become young adults and follow their dreams, they will have the incentive and drive and drive for the future of India. One minute left. Chitrindit, can you unmute the person? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Uh, I just finished. Okay. Awesome, Anjo. That was uh, that was very good and uh, good suggestions. That's uh, thank you very much for for your presentation. And it's it's amazing uh, how the young generation thinks outside the box. So it's so good to hear from you. I'm an educator myself, uh, been an educator for over 30 years. So it is just amazing to see how um, every generation changes and how you think. And it is really um, amazing. So thank you very much for sharing your ideas.
And thank you for the opportunity for letting me speak on the topic as well. You're welcome. Very welcome. So our next participant is uh, Viswa Sofa. So Viswa is a first student at C. Berkeley Science and Political Science. As someone who was born and partially raised in India, he ties to in his ties to India remain strong and fundamental to his identity. He hopes to use this opportunity to learn from other like-minded individuals and for Indian youth abroad. Thank you. Um, I guess I'll just start with a quick thing of uh, the way it's supposed to be pronounced. You're totally fine. Don't worry. It's it is written out as Vishwa. Um, no, no worries at all. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm Vishav Sofit. I'm a first year at UC Berkeley studying poli sci and computer science. Um, the last four years of my life, I've engaged youth in different capacities in New York City, which is where I've resided for high school. Um, but really to take you on my pitch or my proposal, I have to go back through my story of growing up as an Indian American person, uh, Indian American young person rather. And that really starts with when my family moved to the States when I was two. At that time, we were in Tennessee and Wisconsin, but quickly shifting into India when I was in second grade. And I think that's really where the story starts to unfold for me. I speak Hindi, and I knew how to engage with the words my parents would say at home. There's a difference between simply regurgitating things you hear and actually understanding your. And that's what I got when I was able to go to India and live there from second to seventh grade, which really connects to the pitch I like to make. Um, that if Israel is done, they have birth and the birthright program allows students to go at any point, at any time to understand the heritage that Israel has. India is similar in many ways to what Israel has in terms of culture, whether it's religious or not. Capitalize on that, what youth care about. Connect Americans and Indian Americans in particular education and making this connected with you that allow them to not only get credit, but also allows them to bolster their resume for future um, job opportunities. As someone who loves this kind of opportunity, would um, to be able to not only learn more about the perspective, but also being able to learn from it as an individual person and what I could have done in different ways. Um, but really the point a structured opportunity. Those opportunities have been created in Israel through an organization that carries out this program and being able to further develop that program. And there are similar existing programs and I participants somewhat mentioned those between the birthright program and something they want the ones existing right now. You're able to go at any point. apply for a visa. You have sort of a a, a, do, a document of what you'd like to accomplish with your visit. Really make that educational. Applying for this program, they have the, what they'd like to accomplish in their time there. Um, so really, the one with the lived experience I've had of coming able to retain that connection to India because I was able to go there. I, I was in Delft past uh, into learning how to read and read. It remains important to me because I can open up a newspaper and read a source that I would not otherwise be able to understand whether it's Diwali or something even more fundamental and lesser known to our culture exactly that entails. But all the movements that are going on right now is in a critical spot where young people are stepping up to protest. So how do I fit into that picture as someone who is an Indian citizen but does not reside in it? Answer those questions and become involved. We must give students a stake. And that stake starts with experiences that are lived experiences in that country. It has a lot to offer, a lot to see it. So I share with you, do the same. Thank you for having me and it's really been great hearing all your ideas so far it's amazing and it's amazing it's, it's 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 so different to hear from someone who has 
uh, both experiences, being born in India and partially raised here. So it's amazing how our experiences um, uh, build our perspectives. So thank you so much for sharing that with us and we really appreciate it. Um, our next participant is Nitya Shinoi. I was my own student uh, many, many years ago. Well, I don't want to say many years, at least a couple of years ago. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to see her um, grown up and uh, now at uh, Rice University and, uh, and sharing at this uh, session. So it's wonderful to see uh, students grow and reach for the stars. So Nitya Shinoi is currently a freshman at Rice in Houston, Texas, who plans to double major in political science and neuroscience. Her interests include reading, playing the violin and model UN. She is also a part of Rice's student-run paper, Thresher, and enjoys writing political pieces. And I'm so glad she's doing something with science because she was in my science class. So it's nice to see that. Nitya, go ahead. The stage is yours. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm going to start off by for a minute or two. So as previously mentioned, I did some research on various other diaspora outreach initiatives, um, one of which was actually mentioned by the previous participant. So while researching Israel, I came upon a paper by a professor at Johns Hopkins University about um, diasporization strategy, and he was looking at the Tagrit birthright case. And for those who don't know, it's a free 10 day trip to Israel offered to young Jewish adults. It was established as an NGO, but is somewhat financially dependent on the Israeli government. So the diasporization strategy used in this case is homeland tourism. Diasporizes participants with the homeland and also tries to foster a collective identity amongst the participants. Um, this program makes use of like, various educational tours and classes such as storytelling. And more than that, it also demarcates meaning it creates a sense of belonging within the participants. The next case was um, for African nations. And in this case, there was a huge emphasis on digital connectivity. There were a lot of social media movements that various nations utilized. And one of them was actually hashtag being female in Nigeria that created a space where women could tell their stories. And what was nice was that there was a lot of diversity amongst the participants. It was not only native Nigerians, but Nigerians who had moved and settled in other nations. So as you can see, drawing upon an identity created a sense of community and really brought people together. In this case, the outreach was on a grass, grassroots level, not on a um, higher up governmental level. But I think that's the beauty of technology that just anyone can initiate outreach with anyone who they do care. So now I would like to share a few of my own recommendations. Um, the first one that I had was similar to the Tagalog birth, right? The Indian government or any other organization can perhaps in the form of a scholarship contest for homeland tourism. So participants would be given a free trip to India and they'd be given the opportunity to participate in an immersive educational experience that not only teaches them more about um, the culture, but allows them to build connections with other diaspora youth. I decided to recommend this for a few reasons. One, the tourism component would allow youth to further explore India, which is already such a big country. And two, because of the educational component, through storytelling or visits to like very well-known landmarks, youth would become more familiar with the culture and develop more of an attachment or connection to the country. My second recommendation was to connect diaspora youth across various countries in the US, UK, India, etc. Um, we have all had pen pals or at least heard about pen pal programs. Why not do something same through email? In this digital world, we can email whoever we want, reach out to them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If we do reach out to these other kids, we can not only forge connections, but we are given the opportunity to learn more about their own culture, which is extremely beneficial in a time like this. Um, an, activity, an activity like this, I believe, would also change how they perceive India. It's not just a place, it's much more than that. My final recommendation was regarding um, the connection to various opportunities. So India is home to a number of nonprofits and other organizations. I myself recently entered at a nonprofit organization called Sego Foundation, where I was really allowed to learn more about India in general. So pre-COVID, the foundation actually gives students the opportunity to visit India in the summer. 
and get a more hands-on experience. So while a remote internship is not ideal, it is something that is a good substitute. And I believe that if nonprofits take the initiative to broaden their base and use various social media platforms, be it Instagram or Twitter, then they can attract more youth. Today's diaspora youth, especially from India, are extremely hardworking, brilliant people who are constantly looking for new opportunities, providing opportunities to intern at a school or help in a village in India will increase their engagement and cause them to reach out more. So really in conclusion, we need to take advantage of the social media platforms that are widespread and popular today. We need to offer more opportunities, connect us for our youth, and in general, um, make them better acquainted with the culture. Thank you. Thank you, Nithya. And uh, thank you for giving us a peek into the global diaspora experiences, what other countries are doing. Um, so it's amazing. We've had four speakers up to now and they've all given different. Um, so thank you very much for sharing that with us. Our next uh, presenter is uh, Vedan Gannu. And um, uh, too, I saw him. He has a little baby to see them grow <laughs> and stage where they're sharing their, their um, um, you know, their mind with us here. So, so Vedant is a rising senior studying computer science at uh, the Rensselaer Polytech Institute and a data engineer co-op at Ellington Management Group. He's been a youth member of Gopio, Connecticut for countless years who has served on the Gopio Youth Committee helped organize events such as Indian Independence Day celebration, youth networking event in Stanford. As a proud Indian and ambitious student, he's interested in helping the diaspora youth as they are integral members of the Indian community that will serve as role members for future generations. Vedant, you have the stage. Thank you, Vedanti. Um, nice seeing everybody here as well, especially as well. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Vedant. RPI. And so um, I was in school, I'm also in college right now, who have uh, ambition that you know, whether they're born in America, born in you know, France, or back to India as you know, master each the level of ambition that I've seen and kind of lust for opportunities that they have is absolutely incredible and unparalleled to just and so it kind of got me thinking. Uh, what can kind of we have for STEM opportunities? So a lot of my ideas are along the lines of, you know, education and science. So let me just share my screen. So Uh, is it visible or? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it's coming. It's coming. So uh, let's kind of remind ourselves about uh, what the Indian diaspora encompasses. So it encompasses NRIs, PIOs, and overseas citizens of India. And so the first idea that I kind of had is about mentorship, mentorship and exchange programs in India. So the Indian government should set up mentorship, mentorship and exchange programs in countries that are heavily occupied by Indian youth. And so the goal is to kind of teach and research and allow them to work alongside leaders, educators in Indian schools, universities, and communities to learn about India's problems and to motivate them to provide youth-driven solutions. Um, also in R&D, I'd say. Behind this is to have the combination of foreign educational background and interactions with different communities in India. And so it gives NRIs the opportunity to apply their technical know-how and creativity to provide possible solutions to Indian issues like illiteracy, pollution, agricultural distress, and access to medical services in rural countries or rural, or rural areas. And the idea kind of came from the fact that um, a couple of years ago, there's an RPS student who's an Indian as well, who designed a project to help South Africans with texting data images to um, the South African Department of Sanitation for monitoring gauge pipes for rivers and verifying if they're of proper quality and the amount of water coming in. And so I kind of thought about that, um, that level of creativity that just an RPI student had um, set up and made an open source project. We have that kind of program um, in other colleges uh, with Indi the Indian government reaching out to them and asking them, can you make a team of students that can 
uh, think of some kind of innovative solution um, involving technology with solving uh, certain problems that are in India. The idea that I want to kind of move on to is uh, infrastructure planning. So um, I've been to India for like many, many times uh, throughout my life. And the one thing that I've kind of seen is that uh, there's a lot of like traffic congestion. Um, there are buildings that are not like very structurally sound. And so um, looking at architecture of professional spaces, uh, city and road planning solutions to alleviate traffic congestion, residential what kind of solutions that we can bring from a foreign perspective of like, you know, NRIs and people that live in other countries, uh, especially of Indian like origin, if we bring those kind of people in and we ask them, what kind of solutions do you have? What kind of standards do you think are in place in the countries that you live in when dealing with infrastructure planning? I think that would be very integral to India actually, because it sets up a standard for how buildings should be built. Um, and architecture and design are very big fields. They're up and coming fields actually, um, from my experience in college. They're taken very seriously, seriously nowadays. People are doing in like design innovation studies. And I think that harnessing that talent is very important, especially from a foreign background. Uh, the third idea that I kind of had is uh, partnerships and co-op opportunities, uh, but I want to have them at Indian government agencies. Um, a lot of us have like the CIA, the FBI, uh, different defense companies that come to our colleges to provide opportunities. But what about providing opportunities for Indians to work at Indian government agencies at a very young age? So even high schoolers, um, even college students like me should be able to work for uh, National Investigation Agency the Ministry of Science and Technology, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, and providing those kind of government agencies the opportunity to hire uh, youth with innovative solutions would be a really good opportunity to get them that work experience they require and um, getting them involved in their communities um, at very early ages and understanding the technological um, change they have in their society right now and how they can be used for enhancing you know, government opportunities at the moment. Uh, and I kind of say that because the youth right now is very technologically adept. They, they know a lot more about technology. It's, it's a growing space uh, and their ideas are very much valuable in that sector. The kind of crazy idea that I had is that I've been a fan of ISRO for as long as I can remember, <laughs> um, the Indian Space and Research Organization. And I thought about uh, why don't like, you know, why doesn't ISRO employ um, Indian students from like America or from different countries to work for, um, you know, their organization, their agency for R&D purposes. So that would be a thing. Uh, idea number four that I have is um, scholarship opportunities for lesser known, you know, popu less popular fields um, of study, like liberal arts, filmmaking, government related work, education, psychology, business, economics, and political science. And I kind of say that because I think all of us come from that background where STEM is a very important thing. Our parents have ingrained into us that engineering, technology, IT, and computer science are very, you know, booming fields and we have to, you know, chase opportunities. But I think in this generation, especially in the 21st century, we've seen that um, Indians aren't just, they're not hell bent anymore on STEM. They look at different opportunities. I mean, I've met so many people you know, around the world that don't do STEM and they do very like liberal education. They do business, economics. One minute left. Thank you. And so I think it's uh, very integral to take advantage of those people that are very much passionate about different fields of study that are not just STEM. Uh, you know, filmmaking, government-related work, those are things that I would never really have said, you know, growing up, especially in high school. But now that I look at it, um, taking advantage of those opportunities and the people that are willing to, you know, give their, you know, careers to learning about those things is very, very valuable. And it, we should also have the Indian government promote companies and businesses in India to um, take an interest in design-related work, you know. Um, as a college student, UI and UX design is a very big thing. I mean, there are research areas dedicated to those fields, which I'd never even dreamed of. But taking up, taking advantage of those kinds of people that are very much creative in different fields of study that are not that are not science and technology is uh, very valuable, and I think it can really help India in the long run, actually. So that's sort of the conclusion to my ideas. Uh, thank you for listening to my, my spiel. Uh, thank you for all those great ideas and uh, extending your RPI co-op experience to the Indian diaspora. So. Um, yep, <laughs> thank you for that. Is Alicia Carr? Alicia is a graduate of with a degree in legal studies. One day become a lawyer and fight for racial justice and a more inclusive society.
coming from one of the most diverse universities in the United States and being a minority herself, she believes her personal experiences are what drive her towards this goal. After receiving the Women in Leadership Award from Ernst & Young, it has been a personal mission of hers to fight for equality for all races, sexes, and genders. Alicia, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. My name is um, I just want to start off and say all of the different perspectives of these young persons um, who all touched upon different, even Israel and African diasporas. Not myself. Um, it's great view. So great job so far. To be taking a different side of uh, diaspora and how it's affected. And just sharing my perspective being Indian diaspora, um, subject in four different lenses. So sharing with you all today. The contributions uh, that, that diaspora has brought to us, which is the Indian diaspora in the United States is a educated and very full population. Um, India and their children have been in of United States. There's circular migration and transnational investments have a major role in bringing up pharmaceutical industries. Our AD diaspora profile, we actually and 25 U.S. based Indian groups are well, 20 or more have an annual reserve of, and another 59 had an annual reserve of, uh, brought them USA, uh, TIE Global, and of course the esteemed GOP are quoted amongst the most influential. Um, and the World Policy Institute has highlighted the media and diaspora brings. Uh, the uh, report actually like quote, said be freed of India's bureaucracy in the United States. There are example regulations in the Indian economy of dollars and a virtual educational enhancement for the diaspora as, as well. Origin. This role as diaspora has been an important resource to India, not only directly from diaspora members in their role as corporate um, in mainstream U.S. businesses. Second view I see is the economic view. Diaspora is the richest minority actually in India's, um, Indians make less, and the diaspora of, of, um, excuse me, affects is of approximately nine to bridge a wider trade deficit. Sixty Indian origin CEOs, um, and they account for about one trillion dollars of re revenue. Um, we have the best percentage of employees in Microsoft, and just to name a few. Um, another statistic is that eighty percent of Indians are five. And 40% are PhDs. Important and most surprising to me, the median annual income of an Indian is approximately $90,000 compared to a US national of $50,000. Uh, third view of mine is the political view. And this is something that, well, our diaspora holds top United States itself with both. Republican Democrats, as well as the government in the United Diaspora has about 50 in the U.S. presidential team currently serving in the House of Representatives. And most recently, Vice Harris, who was the first vice president to take office, who was of Indian de descent, um, and she is trailblazing the way for, for young individuals, young Indian women like myself, want to set a place in this world to make a difference. Uh, view would be foreign policy. 
somebody today I'm that Indian diaspora is of a soft power and with that because I believe that a fully transferable political well Prime Minister Mr. Modi actually held at Madison Square Garden later in Houston oh I'm sorry <laughs> One minute left. I was saying, um, Prime Minister was held at Madison Square Garden, held receptions at Houston, and this is done as a way of thanking the Indian and diaspora for part in um, the country's electronic campaign funding. Um, the issue of diaspora diplomacy from the vaccine diplomacy, which is what we're seeing more recently, it's a distinct indication for the fact that diaspora community has become in recent years. So described those four views of what Indian diaspora has impacted. I'm going to share one last are the next steps we can implement and grow even um, than the Indian diaspora kind of outlined throughout this. My first idea is that Indian NRI policy uh, with to kick back a portion income tax revenues that collect and the second is that policy should aim to trans partnership projects in different fields, programs, uh, technology, um, and ventures in pharmaceuticals, uh, uh, health cares, uh, health care events, just to name a few. Those are some of my ideas. Um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Very help. Um, I'm very help. You heard some things in my with you. That was definitely very informative. Um, your four views, especially the views are the, the ones on economic, political, and foreign policy, and educating us with your statistics. Um, <laughs> you know that there's 60 uh, Indian bond CEOs with a total revenue of one trillion dollars. Um, so that is amazing. So thank you for um, for showing us a different lens. Um, of the Indian diaspora. Uh, thank you for your time. The presenter is Abhi Parikh, who has uh, just made it. He was grateful and thankful that you reached. Uh, he's living in Paris and he's originally from Ahmedabad, India. Um, so she is um, involved in two, it's two, I mean, he is involved in two startups. Um, one in the education sector and the other one in the food sector, and is immense, immensely passionate about um, his work. Apart from that, he started a few Indian communities on Facebook just to gather Indian people on a common platform. Abhi? Yes. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to, uh, and uh, I would like to thank some uh, dignitaries here present here. Um, yeah, uh, so thank Thank you so much. Uh, I was late. Um, anyways, so um, the topic which I like to speak up today is you know, for the startup uh, because I'm involved in two, uh, two three startups here. So uh, I would like to introduce that, um, you know, uh, given a good platform and to launch their startup, um, to get fund their startup, and to get help uh, in the sense of. Um, so I think the, uh, the youth needs uh, today uh, the startup help like uh, suppose a lot of people are starting the companies but not all the companies are getting successful because they are not getting uh, crucial help uh, at the starting point so I think uh, uh, if we as a common platform like if we as an Indian community provide something uh, to the young entrepreneurs uh, so that you know they're successful in their journey startup journey right so I have some steps uh, to design like how can we go ahead? 
so uh, i think we should need to provide access to information first of all uh, we should provide access to the networks right so uh, and third is to provide uh, access to business training programs so that uh, local entrepreneurs should be and uh, you know there should be network exchange and uh, maybe who knows uh, the great thing might start from there um uh, uh, entrepreneurship migration uh, and, and unemployment these all are linked with link so and the diaspora has a crucial role in maintaining these things uh, to get a proper solution and uh, a good implementation techniques are necessary uh, also in the under the leadership Uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, uh, India has developed a huge in in the startup field, right? In the uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat, so huge potential. And Indians outside India has also a uh, like huge potential, uh, particularly youths. And um, yeah, I mean that that's it. So uh, thank you so much for for the time. Abhi, thank you so much, and uh, this is definitely a different perspective. Um, your generation, there's a lot of startup culture. Our own uh, second uh, child is, uh, you know, in college, and uh, it's it's and it's great that you guys have the spirit, the entrepreneurship spirit, uh, to try out new things, and that is uh, basically what will take your generation uh, much ahead. Thank okay. you for sharing your. Um, and today, our last Gupta, Akshat, from medical technology in Munich, Germany. He first moved out to India more than a decade ago in pursuit of newer academic and career opportunities. And since then, he has had the good fortune of having worked and lived in multiple cultures. His leisurely activities include astronomy, skydiving, wow, and going off the grid once in a while. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you, Akshat. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, giving me the floor to talk about uh, this relevant issue. And uh, I'd like to start off with greetings to everyone, team chairs, viewers, and the presenters helping us expand our views regarding India's outreach. Also, vice versa. I'll come back to that point to start off with a word of thanks once, as always. Going last in a group of presentations would mean that certain ideas might get repeated. I hope you shall bear with me as I uh, and give them a new wing. As I was trying to come up with a limited here right now, I realized for myself. And draw experiences as an expat, and such would be my theme for today: the human aspect of it all. To first try and ask the relevant questions uh, before we land upon a solution. Having had to leave the pursuit of higher education, and then shortly afterwards in that of work, I realized that the exposure I've had with similar out program has been rather limited. Not entirely now, without knowing a lot about the previous. and devils about such programs it would be premature of me to jump about their efficacy range and one other day i'm sure but one thing which is bound to find a place in such conversations the only constant to such questions ironically is the ever changing average indian as the respective of social economic gender or academic classes the proverbial bell curve of the indian populace broad can no longer be limited to a certain sect industry uh, and it is dynamic that similar outreach programs need to address the interests of the expats and this also previously mentioned soft power a lot of times trying to engage with such acts when they're already well entrenched it's at too late asks or involvements could be foreseen if we My diaspora when they are on the verge of moving out. I mean, the intended diaspora uh, moving out. Uh, would it house presence felt in the nascent stages of immigration and thereby provide an outlook in the form of uh, 
which program teachers are meant to be supported and not the need to factor in the missing the various missing links to india and its cultures that the, uh, the identification of such links for me is, is the key and somehow also the cornerstone to its establishment and this is where the feedback loop so not provide a solution unless and until we need to get this information we need to extract this information of the expats and uh, that is how maybe with the conversation we can get this uh, and because of this nature we could rest assured know that the one would be there to stay at least they are doing this is the energy which will help us to when you uh, such initiatives may also help promote the presence of operations such as the no india Pro the government of india of times deep under the radar speaking process and this is where maybe the indian mission will be dealing with the issues that expats face but also with the extent societies their friends and and that is where probably the Indian missions could be in a better vantage point owing to this proximity that populace. And uh, imminent expats tend to find out and set up their support systems when they're preparing to move out. But maybe this is where this is the time and the process we as an organization could and make sure that these concerns and needs are taken to realistic needs, this, these could be social or cultural or language based needs uh, the, these could be uh, and once again because there is no one there could also be no one definition of need it could come across, across from it could be it could take any sh uh, shape or form find uh, with 35 of us over here i'm sure each of us would have a different definition for it this webinar today is somehow already one of the first initial steps in that direction to have the willingness to engage with a newer flux of ideas would ensure that there is to our problems and thereby our solutions. And uh, I'm from my side, I'm definitely curious and uh, willing to discover which path this, this conversation follow. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, once again, I know this, this entire conversation, this entire presentation has been a tad too generic without having promoted any or proposed any concrete solutions. But yeah, of firstly, knowing our uh, our source of problems is the key before we land upon a solution, before we have to walk back towards the problem. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you once again for keeping up with me as I've scrambled to organize my thoughts in a manner which could be useful in this forum. Nevertheless, I really hope we enjoy the Thank you once again. So thank you very much. And, um, you know, there is a benefit to going last too, that you can put forward your thoughts that others haven't, uh, which is basically the perspective of the expat, which, which you very well, uh, you know, gave us a peek into. Um, so thank you for uh, helping us see the expat perspective and as a working professional, that perspective. So we have seen, um, uh, high school students' perspective, college students, and now we are seeing uh, the working professional expat um, perspective. So thank you for that. Um, so all I've seen, we've had eight uh, speakers and different perspectives from eight different because from bright young and bright young adults. So you are all winners, like. Thomas, uh, thank you so much for putting in um, and uh, to, through your presentations. Earlier from today's uh, presentations, Vince, and, uh, and, and I will speak at the webinar on April 10th, I think, in Delhi. Uh, thank Anubji for. Uh, and uh, educating us on the diaspora has been going on for centuries. And for educating us in terms of uh, what the Indian government is doing a wonderful job of reaching out uh, to the Indian diaspora. And, uh, and as you said, it's not just um, in uh, decades, but a century. So thank you for educating us on that. And thank you for all the 
wonderful work that you're doing and reaching out uh, to the Indian diaspora. And I would also like to thank the team that put this together, Dr. Thomas Abraham, um, Anita Bhatt, uh, Naveen, um, thank you so much. And thank you to all the participants who came today, as well as our esteemed guests. And I will uh, pass it on to Thomas. Thomas, you're mute. Thank you, John. And all the team members, although we got really, all these things got organized within the last 10 days. It was a great effort that we put together this thing. And we heard a lot of new ideas. And I think since we have the tape of this, we'll make it available for everybody to watch uh, on YouTube and uh, Facebook. And um, forward, uh, Mudgal said, this is just not just uh, one decade thinking or uh, the next few decades. We are talking centuries thinking, next century, what we should be doing as Indians uh, in the world. We have a contribution to make uh, for world development and our youth will be very much part of it. And this we are thinking ahead for future in terms of the uh, our children, our youth growing up and what role they can play. And this was a wonderful lot of new ideas have come. And um, we look forward to work uh, further on this. And one of the best things so, so far happened is because of this, we are going to develop a global network. As I mentioned, every chapter has the uh, uh, youth uh, network and we'll connect all the youth network on a global basis. So that itself will become a major thing. Whenever any of our youth travel from one country to another, they will always have some friends to meet and to take care of things. That itself will, will be a a good platform for our youth to be involved. Uh, point, I also want to mention that we would have another one for young professional maybe in May, uh, that we will have more time to, uh, to publicize. Uh, so uh, we look forward to your support and uh, uh, word of mouth you can tell others uh, up to the age 40. We want to hear your views from them. Um, I also like to I see Sam and uh, Suresh uh, president of uh, Milan Cultural Association of Hartford and Mr. Lal Mokwani just came in. So thank you all. And before we go, um, Chitranjan uh, and uh, Vijay. Vijay has been a great help. He he owns that uh, Indus TV. So through which uh, we will be uh, having the YouTube video made. And uh, Chitranjan has been a great help. Uh, and uh, Chitranjan to bring all the speakers on the, uh, um, on the screen for a do uh, photo. Can you bring them? Yes, sure. Hmm. And Thomas, I want to say something. Yes. Yes, I, okay. um, all the participants. Oh, Navin. Go ahead, Navin. Yes, yeah, so this is Navin Bhattagir here. Uh, you know, guys, when I came to this country as a student, that was many, many years back, the access to resources was very limited. I am so amazed and I, I am in love with every idea that you have thrown on the floor here. Every little thing that you said has so much of a merit, not only from a various perspective, also from the business perspective, for example. I remember 94 when I came, I made a phone call on ad &T. Now the access to resources is in your fingertips and it's free of charge and all, all the time. I mean, I cannot imagine myself thinking of such ideas when I came here and I miss the time if I can go back in time and and think the way that you have thought, man, what a change it, I can, I could have brought myself. But nevertheless, I'm loving it. I am, it, to me, it's like I am in college now. And thank you very much. I'm in love with all the ideas. I want to see them in writing, of course. I'm hearing a lot, but I, I bet you all these are business cases they can be converted to these are billion dollars ideas that you have shared. Thank you very much. I loved hearing you all. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Naveen. Chitranjan, are we everybody in? Uh, uh, are we missing anybody? I think we are uh, two more people to come in. One yeah. more person. Yeah, uh, start their video. Without video, we cannot add them. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, let me see. All right. Mm. Thomas, I'll just take one minute. Hmm? Once the photo is over. 
All right. Okay. Anybody else has anything? Uh, Ram Gadvi, our vice president, uh, you want to say something? Gadvi? Okay. Otherwise, uh, uh, Thomas, just take one minute. Uh, is it Lam? No, I'm Bamud Gel. Okay. Sure, sure. Yes, just a minute. In fact, I would want to thank you and all others. It was an excellent uh, event. We listened to uh, very exciting ideas from these youngsters. I would want to request them, please write to me. Develop these ideas into workable initiatives, send them to me. We will compile a report and then share with those departments of the government which deal with these issues. You never know when an idea could be picked up. You see, as we say, it's a constant process. There will be no full stops in this process. There'll be small commas and semicolons here. If, you, if I go back, to my career in the early 80s, the world today is very different. If you ask me, we could not have imagined this world then. Or we are not able to imagine what the world will be 20 years from now. And that is where, in fact, your ideas, because those ideas are going to determine what kind of world we are going to have in 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years. And we will have to answer where we prepared when the world was changing. I think we need to be prepared. And that is where this, because with our age, you have a certain view. And unless we are able to marry these two things, we would not be future ready. And we need to be future ready. I think. I would once again thank all of you. Please share your ideas with me and I promise that your ideas will reach where they should. And hopefully some ideas will be picked up for further action. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Murgil. May I suggest to our participants to write a, a page about this thing and send it to us. Uh, yeah. Anita, can you take care of um, them? Yes, I will do it. Uh, Thomas, I need to address uh, yes. participants. Uh, yes. Uh, dear participants, thank you all for attending. I just have, uh, uh, there is something that I want to share with you. My experience about youth uh, taking part in the Indian diaspora. For 13 years, we are working with you. They're brilliant. They, they're very active for a certain period of time and they lose interest. Um, this has really um, a many ways now that we have uh, put our right foot forward, um, the Ambassador Mudgal has given this opportunity and we have created this WhatsApp group. Please be very active in it and uh, don't give up. Uh, just be in that group, uh, interact with other participants. And if not today, there are many other programs coming. Keep your eyes open and don't give up uh, your participation. We really need you to seriously take this and we need your help. The government, Indian government is seriously looking for this. Um, I would like you to take part in it in future also. Thank you and thank you everybody for uh, uh, taking part. Thank you, Anita. Um, so I request page uh, your recommendation and send it to Anita. I want to say something. He's in touch with you, so please. Mr. Garvi, want to say something. Uh, who want to say something? Mr. Garvi. Uh, Ram, Ramba. Um, very proud today. I found out how many things I don't know and they know it. So never underestimate our children anymore. This is the lesson I'm learning from this session right now. Uh, and God bless them. And Anupji, whatever you have started, it's going to bring out a lot of good food fruits. So thank you for this. Everybody thank you so, so much. much. Thank you. And may I request uh, Nami, uh, who was one of our other... Uh, uh, Nami, you want to say something as a final word? Sure. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. First of all, I'm a big, big believer in legacy planning. So even as all of us have been 
working in Gopio, we, like as Anita mentioned, that's why we started the Youth Council as well. It's, it's imperative for us to have the next generation uh, to take over as we retire. And uh, so the mission of Gopio, mission of Indian diaspora must go on. And as Ramji brilliant idea is so inspired by that. Keep, keep on shining, guys. And uh, as Anita said, absolutely, uh, don't lose heart. We need you. And uh, let's move forward. And I would say in, in Sikhism, we say, Chardi Kala, just keep on marching. Thank you. Thank you. So, given our time, we wanted to finish it in one hour, 15 minutes, but um, extend it to another uh, 15 minutes. That's fine. So, it was a wonderful experience to know all of you. But, uh, we will start moving forward with uh, a whole lot of new things in the future. And I thank you, Ashaji. You want to? Say? I just want to add something. You know, as everybody else has said just now, we are so delighted to hear from youth. But find all the youth, you know, things start at home. Communication to the way is very important. You should that not like in a workshop and seminar. You should convey to us as a parent so that we can communicate and take your ideas to the higher level. So please communicate at home and tell what you think about diaspora and your connections to India diaspora. Thank you so much, Thomas. Thank you, everyone. It was really wonderful to have you all of you. Thank you, Ambassador Mujal. And Thank all you the so party much. Friends. It was a great event. And we will do many other things in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Noobji. Thank you, Dr. Thank Thomas. You. Thank Look you. forward. Look Bye -bye. forward to yes. keep on working. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Noobji. Thank you, Thomas.